Welcome to Moments with Mark. We are in Mark chapter 15. If you have been taking this journey with us through the Gospel of Mark, we started several months ago. If you didn't start at the beginning, you can feel free on YouTube to begin at the beginning. Uh, just see the playlist Moments with Mark, and then you can start from chapter 1, verse 1. But now we are in chapter 15. Chapter 15 and 16 are really the main crux of the gospel message. It's the death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ. It's the center point of the Christian faith. And so as we come to these passages, we'll look at the various aspects of the crucifixion, so if you have your Bibles, feel free to turn with me there in Mark chapter 15, starting with verse 1. I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation, but if you have another version, another translation, you can feel free to follow along. The principles and the concepts and the main words will be very similar. The Gospel of Mark chapter 15, verse 1. Very early in the morning, the leading priest the elders, and the teachers of religious law, the entire high council, which was called the Sanhedrin, met to discuss their next step. And so we have here the religious leaders coming together to say, what are we going to do next? So the council is the Sanhedrin, the religious council, that has conducted this trial by night. And they meet together to say, what is going to be our next step? What are we going to do next? And so the next step is the government to portray Jesus as an insurrectionist, as a rebel, as a threat to Caesar. Because they have to have some kind of political crime to convict Jesus in the government court of Rome. And chapter 15 is taking place on Friday of Holy Week. They bound Jesus and they led him away and took him to Pilate, the Roman governor. So Pilate is a part of the government. He is the area leader. Pilate, as we will see in this chapter 15, is a political opportunist, which many politicians are. He doesn't have great moral backbone, as we will see in this chapter 15. He is morally weak, and he lacks integrity. So here we have someone that cares more about his political standing or status than doing the right thing. And sad to say, there are political leaders that are just that kind of people morally weak, and finding no backbone to do the right thing, they are often swayed by the polls or crowds of people. So verse 1, they bound Jesus, led him away, and took him to Pilate, the Roman governor. The reason most likely for this Jewish council to send Jesus to a political government agency like Pilate and his crew is to get the death sentence for Jesus. Some people felt like the Jews at this time couldn't impose the death sentence and so they had to get him to the political government to get them to impose a death penalty and then Jesus be crucified on the cross. So starting with verse 2, we have a political trial. Chapter 14 was the religious trial, and chapter 15, we see the political trial, the government trial. Verse 2, Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus replied, You have said it. And Jesus might be saying something like this, You got the title right. But the concept behind it, you don't understand. Jesus certainly was a king, but he wasn't a political king. He wasn't a, a part of a coup to take over the Roman government. Uh, Jesus' kingship 
is a spiritual kingship. And his kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. Verse 3. Then the leading priests kept accusing Jesus of many crimes. And Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer them? What about all these charges they are bringing against you? But Jesus said nothing, much to Pilate's surprise. So Jesus doesn't defend himself. He stands accused and without any response verbally from Jesus, Pilate is left into a situation that he doesn't know how to help Jesus. Now, it was the governor's custom each year during Passover celebration, which was a Jewish celebration, to release one prisoner, anyone the people requested. One of the prisoners at that time was Barabbas. Now, some manuscripts bring these names forward to us in verse 7 as Jesus bar Abbas and Jesus bar Joseph, Jesus being the name. Bar meaning son of. And so Jesus bar Joseph is Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And this Barabbas is named Jesus bar Abbas, Jesus son of the father. And so we have these two people being put before the crowd. And we have Jesus bar Joseph, the Nazarene, and we have Jesus Barabbas. Barabbas and two others are taken into custody as rebels to the Roman government. So verse 7, one of the prisoners at that time was Barabbas, a revolutionary, a rebel, who had committed murder in an uprising, an insurrectionist. The crowd went to Pilate and asked him to release a prisoner as usual, as was the custom during the Passover feast. Would you like me to release to you this king of the Jews? Pilate asked, for he realized by now that the leading priest had arrested Jesus out of envy. Verse 11. But at this point, the leading priest stirred up the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas. So do you want Jesus bar Joseph or Jesus Barabbas to be released to you? And they cried out, Barabbas. We want Barabbas released. We want Jesus of Nazareth to be sentenced to death. But at this point, the leading priest stirred up the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas instead of Jesus. Pilate asked them, Then what should I do with this man you call king of the Jews? And here, unwittingly, he is portraying a question for all of us, a universal question. How are you going to respond to Jesus, King of the Jews? What is your response to this Jesus before you now? And as we open up the gospel pages, the question comes to you and comes to myself. How are we going to respond to this Jesus? What will be our reaction, our response? Positive, reception, honor, adoration? Or will we ignore him and put him to the side? They shouted back, crucify him. Why? Pilate demanded. What crime has he committed? But the mob roared even louder. Crucify him. So to pacify the crowd, to satisfy the crowd, to please the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them and he ordered Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip, then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. So Jesus was uh, taken into custody, condemned to death, tortured by a whipping that often left people near death after the whipping, after the scourging, and Barabbas was released to the people. So here we have, in our view, an innocent man suffering for the sins of people, and Barabbas, 
a man guilty of insurrection, guilty of rebellion to the Roman government, guilty of murder, being released. This is how much this crowd and these religious leaders hated Jesus. Now, some people will say, well, wasn't this the same crowd in chapter 11 that hailed him as king of the Jews as he rode in on Palm Sunday on the donkey? Well, it could be that they are fickle. It could be that they are changing their mind and saying, uh, he's not our king anymore. We don't want his kingship. It could be, or it could be two different crowds of people. And this crowd is simply being led to cry out, crucify him, give us Barabbas, crucify Jesus. Well, today in our passage, it begins the story of the crucifixion. And the cross of Christ becomes central to the faith of any Christian. And in chapter 15, we have the story of the trial, death, and then chapter 16, the resurrection of Christ. I want to thank you for joining us for Moments with Mark, and we'll pick up the story there when we rejoin in our next video.